Hey, this is Rachel Mazza. Welcome back to our Cold Traffic Guest Expert Series. So today we're talking with Mike Renard, and I know Mike from the Copy Chief community. He is a in-demand copywriter, and he's a Facebook ad expert. He teaches in Copy Chief about Facebook ads. I saw him speak on stage live at Copy Chief Live about Facebook ads. Uh, and I was just absolutely blown away with the value that he provides and the level of knowledge that he has. So Mike is in the trenches every single day, figuring out what converts, figuring out how to remain compliant, and he's worked with some of the best marketers in the world uh, and helped them keep their ad campaigns profitable and convert off of cold traffic. So he's going to share what he's learned with us today. He works with six and seven figure entrepreneurs. Um, I believe you work with Kevin Rogers at Copy Chief as well, right, Mike? Yep. And I saw that you guys tripled ad spend while keeping it profitable. Is that right? Yeah, we did. Uh, since then, probably a little bit, a little bit higher than that, but yeah. Yeah. That's awesome. That's really impressive, especially off of cold traffic, which I know you guys were approaching. Yeah, it's all, it's all cold traffic. Um, and that's a, yeah, it's a pretty cool, pretty cool case study and, and story. And obviously awesome working with Kevin. He's a, he's a great guy and super fun. So yeah, he's a, a Probably one of my favorite people in the whole world, so <laughs> no complaints there. <laughs> yeah, totally. Well, let me ask you, what do you think that people need to know when they're writing specifically for Facebook ad copy that would be different than writing for a sales page or even email copy, which is still short form a lot of times? Yeah, I mean, I think like the big obvious one that a lot of people are running into right now is compliance um, yeah. and how to write powerful, compelling copy that is also compliant, uh, which is harder than, than you might think, especially in specific, um, you know, in specific markets, which happen to be the biggest markets in the world. So, so it's a tough thing, but I think the compliance is, is huge. And a lot of people writing, um, you know, that's a, that's a big struggle. They're not, they're not compliant. They don't actually understand the ecosystem. They don't understand the rules of Facebook. Um, and, and what I see a lot of people doing, getting like really frustrated, which I understand because I've been there, I've been in that position of like, you put an ad up, it gets denied, you change it, it gets denied, you change it again, it gets denied it over and over and over and over and over and over. Um, and it's really frustrating, but if you don't get out of that place of frustration, you're never gonna, <laughs> you, you're never gonna get to the next phase, which is actually like, okay, what does it look like to make this work? And really understanding, uh, what Facebook wants, like what they're, they want their platform to look like and how you can fit into that and how your business can fit into that. And just given the number of people on Facebook and how much time they spend there. What do you think is the biggest change or shift that's happened recently that, that keeps throwing people on compliance? <laughs> I mean, Oh man, I, it's funny. Like I think I saw an article the other day, like the big Facebook change that just happened that business stars are freaking out about. And I was like, you could probably post that 365 days a year. Um, because it's constantly changing. Um, it's always changing. And, but right now they're in a, you know, they, they've hit max ad load. So there's no like additional room, uh, which means that costs are going up and the rules are changing pretty quickly. Uh, and so stuff that you used to be able to do, you can't do, you can't make claims. You can't do all this. Um, you know, a lot of stuff that we, that we're used to doing in copywriting, you just, you can't. Um, and, and so that's the challenge, I think, especially coming from uh, traditional copywriting, you know, bigger businesses like, like Agora that kill it in direct response have obviously also killed it in Facebook, you know, especially during like the crypto currency thing and all that kind of stuff. But yeah. they're like basically black hatting it. And when that stuff just, yeah, it doesn't, it doesn't work. It's not a, it's not a long-term solution. So yeah, you can't be aggressive like you would or, or even direct a lot of times, right? Yeah, I think that, you know, you, yeah, you can't make, I mean, one of the big things is like you can't make a claim that doesn't apply to literally everyone, right? So, so if somebody reading it, if there's like the slightest chance that they would not be able to experience that, you really can't say it. Um, Which is crazy confusing. for a copywriter, right? Like that's our right. job. <laughs> right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So I think, yeah, you gotta, you really have to take a totally, like a more comprehensive approach and have, depending on what your actual offers are, you probably have to have a specific Facebook offers, 
um, and specific Facebook pages that are designed for Facebook, designed for compliance, uh, and and just trying to like, um, yeah, just trying to black hat it. I, they're getting so much better at, at noticing that stuff. It's so much harder. You really can't anymore. That's actually a really good point is, is after you get that click off of Facebook, what kind of offer, what would you change on the landing page um, to turn those clicks into clients or into customers in order to still remain compliant? I mean, what kind of stuff do you have to consider on your lander as well as the Facebook ads that you would recommend people pay attention to? Yeah, well, so the Facebook's looking at that too, right? So it's, it's not just your ads, it's your ads, it's whatever they click through. Um, depending on how much traffic you're running and just the randomness of it, they might be watching videos, uh, they might be subscribing and taking a look at the next step, that's probably pretty unlikely, but uh, it's, known, it's known to happen. And they, I don't know if you've seen those surveys that pop up every now and then, but like on Facebook, you might see a survey of like, hey, did you buy XYZ? Mm. Uh, what was your experience like? Um, and, and so like, I guess going back to like what Facebook wants, they want to create a great experience for everyone. That's it. So your lander has to create a great experience. Um, and so if you are, you know, obviously, so you have to have like the basics, the privacy policy, different, all those different kinds of things. Your page load time has to be good. Um, it might get to a point where you can't just have like that crazy strict landing page where there's nothing else to do except convert. Um, you know, in theory, that doesn't create a great experience unless somebody's like, yes, this is exactly what I want. Yeah. Right? Obviously not everybody does. So, yeah. uh, so having, you know, a, a place where they can click to get in contact with you or different options like that, that in Facebook's mind, create a great experience. Um, which is you, tough because as marketers, we know that that stuff can sometimes hurt conversions. So it's, it's that weird balance that we're fighting here. Yeah, but I think if you take the frame of of you wanting to create a great experience as well and knowing the kind of experience Facebook wants to create and then find a way for those to align. So like maybe it's a maybe it's like a messenger thing. Um, yep. hey, do you have a question and they can subscribe to Messenger. And realistically, that's great, right? Um, because then they're in your ecosystem, assuming you have some type of type of messenger strategy um, or drift or all those other types of things. So there's things like that that you can build in that create a good experience, but also create conversion. That makes sense. And it's, it sounds like there's like, there's just so many moving pieces and, and compliance issues to pay attention to. So when you're approaching a new campaign, how do you kind of double check or, or make sure that you're up to date on everything? Or how do you, what's your system for approaching a new copy campaign on Facebook? Yeah. So, I mean, I think you got to keep up to date with Facebook's rules, right? And so that's just something to check with, you know, and keep updated with it. I just have it, you know, like bookmark it and go check in and, and see what's there. But as you read through it, you'll notice that it's, kind of open to interpretation, right? So I talk to people all the time. And they're like, hey, this, I can't get this approved. I don't understand why. Um, and I can look at it and tell them why. But just from reading the rules and, and you know, so I think it, it's a mixture of like understanding the rules, understanding the ecosystem, what Facebook's looking for, and then just kind of being in it and knowing like, yes, this can fly. No, this can't fly. I mean, a great example of this is like, I was talking to a guy in a Facebook group and he had posted up an ad and there's nothing visibly wrong with it, but he's using the word you plus negative language. Mm. Um, and just in my experience, especially over the last six months, that doesn't fly. Um, and so, you know, he changed that and it got approved. Uh, wow. So sometimes it's like that. <clears throat> it's that simple, but it's, it's not always easy to see because ultimately Facebook decides and they're, the rules that they have listed are kind of open to interpretation. So yeah, it's, it's a little bit of a mix of having the experience to know and, um, and then kind of staying on the side of safety, I think. Well, and that's one of the reasons that, that the people on my list were so interested to hear from you is because you are in the trenches all the time, seeing what works, what's does, what doesn't, and what worked yesterday that doesn't work today. Um, and that perspective is, I mean, you can't, you can't, buy that you have to you have to be well they can if they hire you i guess but <laughs> you can't you can't buy the knowledge yourself um what are some of those 
the biggest, biggest mistakes that you see over and over again that people keep making that you wish you could just like slap their hands every time you see it? Uh, specifically related to compliance? To compliance, I think that's where people struggle with the most because it's always changing. Yeah, yeah totally. I mean, I think um, maybe just going into a new market without doing the research, right? Uh, and then like, let's say, so I had a conversation with a guy a couple months ago who wanted to go into the high ticket consulting niche, which is really competitive niche to begin with. But um, yeah, he really hadn't done his hadn't done his research. So there was so many problems with with his strategy in that uh, the funnel that he had built ahead of time without testing or doing research. <laughs> that's actually the biggest problem. That funnel would have worked like a year and a half ago, but it's not going to work now partly because of market believability and just what the, what the market is they've seen before, what they're going to believe, what they're going to be attracted to. Um, that's a big thing, but also just because it was just blatant financial claims. Mm -hmm. Right. And so, and to me, like, uh, I think that's a little bit lazy, you know, of like, so we have to, when we're marketing on Facebook, get a little bit creative in how we're going to approach this and how we're going to design offers and how we're going to position them. And it can't just be, uh, here's how to make, you know, a million dollars next year in under 60 days or whatever, right? Like it can't be that just kind of blatant claim. It's gotta be something more creative that is going to capture people's attention, desire, help them overcome their problems, but in a way that's not just a straight up claim. You know what I yeah. mean? Something um, that and so you, that picture without making a claim. Totally. Totally. So so yeah, I think that there's examples like that. There's obviously tons of examples in in um, like weight loss um, and like health markets, different things where what you might say uh, doing an email drop or doing an even to your email list after people subscribe, you're not gonna be able to say on the front end, right? We're not gonna be able to talk about before and after um, weight loss case studies. We're not gonna be able to talk about how we made how we built a six figure agency in, in 60 days. We're not, you know what I mean? Like we just can't do that. Again, uh, so it's, like all, it's all like copy unfriendly. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> a lot of yeah. times. <laughs> yeah. 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 But well, go ahead. I think there's, there are, there are ways around it. Um, and ultimately if you're, if you're looking to build a business for the long term and, and beyond these, these platforms that, um, where they are creating a specific type of ecosystem and they are in control. It's theirs. Um, you know, we just got to find ways to, to fit in to that and, and build at least portions of our business that, that fit into that. And sometimes it may actually create a better experience for, for some of the consumers on the front end too. That's the thing. If you're building a long-term brand, a long-term business, complying with Facebook can only help you because you're just building a better experience for your own people. It's not like just like getting your gaming the system or getting around the system. Um, that stuff can only help you. So totally, yeah. It's, and it's like kind of going a layer deeper, right? Like, cool, yeah, building a six-figure agency in two months is something I guess everybody wants to do. But why? Right. Right. And then so like let's go let's go some layers deeper. So it's not just a financial claim, um, and it's tied to to things that that people want, like deep desires, deep beliefs that they want. Um, things that they they want to believe and experience for themselves that aren't just financial related, that aren't just weight loss related, because ultimately that's not what people want. They want something else. So if we can get to that deeper layer, um, you yeah, know, we can get to creating some pretty powerful marketing. Well, and that's the thing is if you're if you're doing the research that you need to do in order to comply with Facebook standards, it's only going to enhance your product and your offer. So it's I mean, there's no reason to try and game the system because you might as well just do it right. It'd just be better off anyway. <laughs> totally. I mean, well, the reason is it's a lot harder and it takes more yeah. time, right? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but, but it's totally worth it. Yeah. Yeah. What do you think? So let's say you, you get everything right with compliance and you've, you've stayed on top of things. You stopped using that negative language. You're making sure that you're complying with their, all of their requirements. What are some of the quick wins in copy writing for uh, conversions that you think people should just do as a standard? Uh, in their copy for Facebook? Um, I mean, it is a lot of traditional copy stuff if you take out some of the, the heavy hitting 
mm. like claims and promises. But uh, so, you know, one of my favorites is stories. Um, if you can tell great stories and show people, uh, you know, how you've accomplished things or how somebody else has accomplished things without making it all about, again, those promises and claims, then that's a really powerful. So story frameworks are, are huge. Um, and I've actually got a process built around stories for, for Facebook ads um, that we can talk a little bit more about that might be cool for people. Um, but that's a, that's a big one. And I think it was, it's either Dan Kennedy or Gary Benchavanga. <laughs> I can't remember who's, who said this, but it, to make your marketing valuable itself, right? And that's not the exact quote. I really can't remember. But if your marketing is valuable in and of itself, that, you know, that's, that's kind of the dream. And so if your Facebook ads are valuable in and of themselves, they're going to get commented on, shared. Yep. Um, they're, you know, they're going to convert. They're going to create a great experience for people. And so if you're focused on, <clears throat> and that's what I mean, like almost changing your mindset, how can we create a great experience for somebody in this ad, whether they buy or not? Um, and that could be making it educational, right? It could be, have educational value. It could have um, entertainment value. Uh, it could help create an aha moment for them around a false belief they have that is holding them back from experiencing what they want in life. Um, and so there's so many ways to, to do that, but kind of having that mental frame, I think is really big. Yeah, that's huge. I'm a big proponent of that because I specialize in advertorials, as you know, and it's the same thing. No one wants to share an ad and no one wants to share your shitty content either. And so it's, if you make it valuable, interesting, if you lead with value and, and don't try and trick them into getting your landing page and getting to your landing page, you want to like hold their hand and continue to, to provide value all the way through. And advertorials are often a piece right after the Facebook ad. And so it, that it has to be congruent, but it also has to provide just as much value because people are just going to get fatigued more and more through that funnel anyway. So it's like just continuing to step up that value. I'm a big fan of that for sure. Yeah, totally. I mean, I think the last thing you want to do is trick somebody into your landing page. Like that's such a short term strategy. I, you know, I would never want to, to do that because I want somebody to see this ad and have such a great experience with it. They want to share it. They want to comment on it. Right. They're excited to take the next step. Um, and as they each, as each step of, you know, whatever funnel or wherever it is that we're, that we're sending them, they're getting their, their desire is built. They're getting more excited. Um, and yeah, I, I think having that type of strategy is, is, is huge. I'd love to hear a little bit more about your, um, so you said you have a process for creating stories for Facebook ads. I'd love to hear more about that. Um, and specifically how you can introduce those proof elements without making those big claims or making big claims in your ads. Yeah. So the, the story process is, so this kind of developed because I, I've started doing a lot more um, like consulting for Facebook ads over the last you know, six months to a year where instead of me just running ads for, for people and helping them with the compliance and helping them with, with their writing and all that kind of stuff. And as I was doing this, um, I noticed that a lot of people are really struggling to write great ads. And so I started trying to come up with frameworks and different things like that to help people like basically write, write better ads without me doing it for them. Um, and so, so I'm kind of building a, a specific type of copywriting system or yeah, really just Facebook ads copywriting system um, that I'll hopefully have done it at some point in the near future and be able to, to, you know, build into something that people can use, but I can give you like the one exercise from that that has been really useful for my clients so far um, is, and it kind of starts with your research. Like, so you take a look at you know, all of your research, go through your normal research process. And then the three big themes that we can pull out of that are fear, pain, and desire, right? And those are big, three big copywriting themes. The problem is if you just take that, um, so let's take like the tax market because I have a client I was working on this with recently. The fear might be the fear of getting audited. Mm -hmm. The pain might be the pain of tracking your taxes and keeping up with all this freaking paperwork and receipts and everything the IRS needs to see. Uh, and the desire is to build wealth through saving on taxes. If we were just to write an ad that says, hey, are you scared shitless that the IRS is gonna audit you tomorrow? <laughs> 
<laughs> obviously not gonna say shitless. But are you know are you are you sick and tired of worrying about the IRS and getting audited and et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera? Um, like that's not gonna fly. Facebook's not gonna like that. We're calling people out directly. We're making them feel bad. We're doing all this stuff. So instead of doing that, um, you would take your three themes: fear, pain, and desire, and then you would brainstorm five to ten trigger moments in their lives where this comes up and where it's very present for them, right? So an example would be um, the audit letter arrives in the mail, right? Uh, or you're talking to your CPA and they say, hey, we can't represent you against the IRS in this audit because you didn't track your receipts. Wow, yeah. Right? I, I, can, I can feel that <laughs> and I have yeah. never audited, yeah. <laughs> and so, I mean, the idea literally came from like, I'm a huge fan of fiction. I read tons of fiction and storytelling. I started, you know, <laughs> kind of playing around with writing novels and, and all that kind of stuff. Awesome. Totally different story. But in fiction st storytelling, there's a huge, you know, the huge thing is show, don't tell. We talk about that too, but it's really, really big in fiction and pulling somebody into this moment. Um, so if your ad can use that trigger moment and pull somebody into it, they feel the emotion instead of you telling them. So much more powerful. Right, yeah. um, where if you can, and if you can use dialogue so that they hear it in their voice and they step into that character. Um, like, so one of the ads that, that I wrote from this, from that specific example was, um, I'm sorry, Bob, it looks like the IRS will automatically win this audit and there's nothing we can do about it. Just dialogue, right? And then it went on to tell this story of a guy self-employed business owner who hasn't done anything wrong, but he didn't keep track of all of his receipts in the right way. And when he got audited, the IRS automatically won because that's what happens. And a lot of people don't realize that. Yep. Yeah. Yep. So. And that totally was okay, that. even though it was like a negative moment, you were telling a story about Bob. And so it was all right for compliant issues, compliant issues. Yeah. Totally. And there's really no negative language in that. Right. Um, you know, like the, I guess, sorry, but yeah, it doesn't, it doesn't put off the automatic triggers for Facebook. It's not calling people out directly. It's more just kind of telling this story. Um, and you, you do want to be careful that you're not using overly negative language. But one of the things you can do is just write it and then go back through and like uh, just kind of tweak it for this. I mean, that's what I usually do is just write your ad and then go through and tweak it for compliance. Um, right. But using stories that way is a really great way to pull people in. And that, that idea is the baseline of this whole copywriting system I was talking about. Yeah, that's awesome. So you, do you usually favor long form ads over short form ads so that you can use those stories? Totally, yeah. Yeah, yeah 100%. Never... No, go ahead, I'd like to hear. Um, yeah, I like, yeah, I, yeah, definitely. Long form is great uh, because it also allows you to do a much better job of attracting and filtering. Right, so you want to track the people who this is a great fit for and filter out the people who it's not, right? Um, I think, you know, a few years ago when Facebook traffic was insanely cheap, you could just use, you know, blatant curiosity, drive as many people as possible, convert as many of them as you can. Um, and that's, you know, it's, it's not super cheap anymore. It's more expensive. So now you really want to filter who you're getting to, to interact with your ad and click through because that's part of the, it's also part of the trigger loop that Facebook uses for their targeting. So if you are using just blatant curiosity and getting as many people who see an ad to click through as possible, Facebook is, is gonna think like, oh, everybody who's clicking through on this ad is a great fit, we'll go target more of them. Meanwhile, if your landing page is converting at like 15 or 20%, uh, then you are in this like negative loop where Facebook is then targeting tons of people who this is not a good fit for and it's yeah it's not a good situation so long form is 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 much better in my opinion especially when you've got if you've got just a lead capture like a free offer like i remember when we were talking about uh kevin's 60 second sales hook offer and i was writing some advertorials for that and you had some incredible short form ads that were converting like crazy but they were just sending you people that never did anything and those long form ads the stories that you wrote were just they would just send you such better quality leads that it was almost like it was it was not even worth it to approach short form ads anymore. Yeah, and I mean I think there's still there's definitely still a place for short form ads with you know retargeting and some you know if you are sending if you're going to an advertorial or if you're going to content or different things like that. Um, so but with a lot the of the story has already been told somewhere else. Yeah, exactly. Or yeah. it's with a video. 
Um, but a lot of the funnels that I'm working with, we're going from cold traffic straight to an offer for a sale or you know lead or whatever that looks like. And so it's almost like putting all of that stuff into the ad itself. Yep. Yep. Yeah. Why wait, race, waste uh, extra real estate if you can just put it in the ad and people can read it there. <laughs> totally. Yeah. yeah. And then that, that creates uh, better, better content, better experience and, and all the above. So, yeah, absolutely. Oh, well, okay. So does this uh, story writing system have a name yet? Because I definitely would, would like to send people to a, a landing page and, and send them there. Cause that's pretty awesome. I mean, so I, I'm, I'm interested. I would like to learn it when you're ready. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's getting there. It's getting close. It's called the, so right now it's called the soundbite copywriting method that awesome. could be totally different in the future. But the idea of using a, um, you know, a soundbite is a snippet from something else, <clears throat> a small snippet from something larger. And so if you take your prospect's life and pull out these little trigger moments um, that we can use to bring them into those most painful <laughs> moments of that problem or the most desirable moments of, of that desire, uh, then yeah, it's, it's pretty powerful. And then using specific little sound bites at the top of the ad, like dialogue. Um, yeah, I've got a bunch of different kind of frameworks for it, but yeah. Cool. That's really exciting. I can't wait for yeah. that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Me too. So yeah. hopefully it, uh, yeah, it's, it's getting there. I've been testing a, a ton of stuff with it. Uh, now it's just a process of making it, you know, kind of all work together. So. Well, what we'll do is uh, I'll link to your, your current resource, which is Facebook ad magic um, in our, the resources of this, this video. And then if anyone wants to learn more about the system that Mike's creating, get on his list and then he'll, uh, I'm sure that he'll let you know when it's ready. Yeah, and that, <laughs> Facebook ad magic is part of that system too. So it's, it's like a smaller part of, of cool. um, testing. There's a bunch of stuff about stories in there as well. So get started um, so. with that. Exactly. Hold yeah. tight. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. 100%. Well, I want to respect your time, but if you've got a couple of minutes, I'd love to ask you a couple of questions from people that uh, wrote in for my list. People had so many yeah. questions, so we'll just pick a couple of them if you got a minute. Let's do it. Let's awesome. do it. All right. So uh, Jared Morris is a Google AdWords expert who's a good friend of mine, and I know he's, he's looking to expand into Facebook ads. So he's asking, how are you warming up the traffic? So be specific. Are you running video that speaks to a specific problem? So you take a general approach or are you running specific videos? How many, how large are the audiences? I think you'd just like to know a little bit more how you specifically warm up this cold traffic. And you answered that a bit with your, with the stories basically. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I really don't <clears throat> for almost everything I'm doing. I'm going from cold traffic to an offer um, and not warming it up though for people who don't. So we would, you know, most of those funnels would go from a Facebook ad to you know, uh, a low price product, three plus shipping, lead magnet, whatever it looks like. Um, and we're not necessarily warming it up. If people don't take action on that, then we could, you know, then we might retarget to an advertorial, to content, to video, videos, yeah, <clears throat> all the above, anything that's going to, you know, they basically raised their hand and said, Hey, I'm interested in this. So what else do they need to know? What else do they need to believe? Um, to take action on it is the question I would ask and then build content <clears throat> that is going to help push them, you know, get them over the fence. But yeah, for everything else, it's, it's a Facebook ad. It's a long form Facebook ad direct to that offer. Yeah. That's and, awesome. And stories. And I mean, if you think yeah. of your ad as a, if you take the frame of mind, like this ad has to make the sale, then what would you put into it? It's probably gonna be a lot more than, you know, a few sentences in the link. So yeah, trying to just push form. the traffic. Yeah. 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 That's really good. That's actually a really good way to do that. I might pull that out and use it as a, a quote for our episode because that's that's everything right there, right? Try what if your ad had to do the selling for you? What would you put in there? Totally. Yeah. 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 That's like um I think Dean Jackson says it like what would you do if you could only get paid based on results? Yeah, I love that. What would you write in your ad if you knew it had to make a sale? Yep. There you go. That's all you need to know. It's done and done. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Awesome. Well, here's one from David Power, who I think you know from Copy Chief. Um, he said, what characteristics or thresholds does a business need to possess in order for Facebook ads to make sense? So stated another way, are there businesses who should not yet run Facebook ads? Um, yeah, it's a good question. I think it probably depends on the expectation of the business itself. So if you are expecting for Facebook to be a, a, 
profitable, scalable traffic source for you, then you need to have an offer that converts and a way to convert people, right? So, you know, I have something I call the Facebook ads pyramid, which is, you know, at the base level of the pyramid, you have to understand your audience at a really, really deep level, understand their cores, their core pains, fears, and desires. Um, then you have to have an offer that converts and works on Facebook. You have to have a funnel that, you know, that accomplishes that conversion. And then you have to have your ads at the top of the pyramid. A lot of people just start or they, they kind of slap stuff together and then start at the top. <clears throat> and, Run ads and, and figure out what to do with those people when they get there. Exactly. And I'm not saying that doesn't work because obviously it, it does. And there is value to, to speed of implementation and things like that. But if you're looking for Facebook to be this thing that you have to have those elements. That said, if you are just looking to build awareness in a local market or you are uh, looking to experiment and play around with it, I mean, I don't, when businesses don't have that in place, I, I tend to tell people, hey, just take a, a budget that you're comfortable spending with, you're, uh, you know, like say $100, $500 a month, whatever it is, and just play around with it without expectation. Um, the problem is, is if you go in without having all that stuff and you have this expectation it's gonna be instantly profitable, it's not, you know, yeah. like it's very yeah. rare for something to just start working right away. And Facebook is hard. There's a lot of people saying it's easy. It's not. Mm. Um, and so I think just having the right expectations going into it um, and then having the right, make sure you have the right elements in place to, to make it work. So make sure you've got some, uh, an offer that converts on another yeah. channel maybe, and then you've taken care of those first two tiers of the pyramid, and then you can approach Facebook and how to tweak it for Facebook maybe. Yeah, or if you have a, you know, like Kevin, I think Kevin's a great example because he had a funnel that worked really, really well for organic traffic, um, 60 second sales hook. And it's not to say it didn't work for Facebook traffic, it did. Um, we were getting very low cost leads for, you know, under $2 and, and people were, you know, taking the next step, but, um, you know, we wanted it to be better. And so we built the four by six copywriting system funnel and it's tied to a deeper uh, core problem and core desire for copywriters specifically. And so, uh, so that, that, that really, really amplified things, but, um, yeah, it doesn't have to, cause I think starting with Facebook as the first channel is actually a good idea because Facebook's still the cheapest, um, you know, at least as, as far as I'm aware. So, uh, or one of the cheapest depends on the market, I guess, but yeah, it's okay to start there, but I think just having the right expectation and knowing that, it's not just about the ads, mm -hmm. you know, it is about, you really do have to understand the market. You really do have to have a good offer. You really do have to have a way to convert people. Um, and that long-term view. Uh, Be ready might, to test. Yeah, totally. <laughs> I mean, I, I could go in for a new business and it might take me two or three months to get something profitable. Yeah. So if you don't have that experience level, it might take longer. Um, you know, you never know. So. Cool. That's actually a good, segue into the next question. Um, ben Upsell is asking about that. When you first start testing an offer, do you create a bunch of advertorials with different angles? Um, so he's saying, how broad do you go with your angles when you first start testing an offer? Um, so yeah, I wonder if he's talking about testing offer angles or add angles going into the offer. So he's saying different angles that could each attract a broad demographic or psychographic, or do you start testing highly distinct angles to see which ones pick up first? So do you go broad and then try niche down or you test really niche uh, ideas and angles and then just kind of like gravitate towards those ones? I think it, <clears throat> yeah, I'm not hundred percent sure. I totally understand what he's asking, but, um, I think it depends on what you find in the research. Mm. And so if you have found, I'll tell you just, and actually the Facebook ad magic report is my testing process for, it's, it basically gives you the testing process for a new offer. But let's say I'm working with a, a client and they've got whatever, a free plus shipping book funnel. And we, we go do that research process I talked about where we go into the market and we're gathering cold market data. We're not just doing a deep dive survey. We're not just doing something that's customer based. We're literally going out in the market and finding, um, you know, using forums and, and all kinds of different things like that to pull, <clears throat> pull all that data, take out the fears, pains, and desires and go through whatever brainstorming process we go through to come up with hooks. And then this is basically what I talk about in that Facebook ad magic report, but I'm going to write three ads 
with three distinct hooks for that gotcha. market, right? Yeah. Um, or for that offer. And then I'm going to write five variations of the lead of the ad, the above the fold body copy, which is what you can see before you click continue reading. Um, and so in total, that's going to be 15 long form ads, um, but doing it in a pretty leveraged way through that ad magic process where you're only writing three ads, but you're turning it into 15. <clears throat> and um, yeah, I remember you talking about that in copy chief and it just like, blew people's minds. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's, that's yeah. awesome technique. Yeah. It's a cool, it's a cool little process and the difference between just, you know, cause what the lead frames people. Um, and so the difference in, you know, same ad with different leads, I mean, a, it totally looks different in the Facebook environment. It looks like a completely different ad. Yeah. Um, and because the copy is different and then you can use slightly different images and things like that. But the difference in conversion yeah, can be absolutely massive because you're framing people in different ways, attracting different types of people. So that's my testing process for an offer is, is going through that deep research process and then testing 15 ads for that offer. Typically from that getting, you know, two to three controls and gotcha. then you take those two to three controls and apply the same process to create variations on it get video ads going and, yeah and then it's build very front end ecosystem yeah. yeah yeah awesome awesome all right i'll give you uh two more questions here because there's a lot but we'll just hit them i'll choose uh alize aj he's always got really good questions so he says he wants to know some high level messaging strategies for writing ads on Facebook. So do you write real stories about clients? Um, the usual hero's journey, even start with what's usually negative and turn it into positive. I know you talked a little bit about that, but I mean, how do you pull out those stories? You mentioned reading fiction um, is really good for you. So when you're reading, do you just like see that and say, oh, that would make a good Facebook ad? Um, no, I think like with fiction, I just, I love reading fiction. And so I'm almost just looking for a good excuse to read it all the time. So I read, you know, like an hour, hour and a half at night often before bedtime. And I think you just like styles of writing and story frameworks and the ways that people use dialogue and these moments kind of get infused into your brain yeah. in a way. Um, so that when you then go do your research and you're looking for these fears, pains, and desires. But what you're also looking for is like the moments in people's lives where that is typically popping up. Um, and maybe moments that, that you wouldn't just magically come up with on your own. Uh, you know, so. Fuel your brain. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so if you can find those, those moments, I think then uh, yeah, you can use them and, and do what I was talking about, where you can still start with the problem, you can still start with the negative in, in that story-based way. And then, you know, you may talk about how, how this person overcame that problem, um, which is why we created XYZ product, and then yep. go through this, this whole process. But um, Well, and this stuff is yeah. great for, for any copy, not just Facebook ads. I mean, this is always use stories. Just everyone always use stories. <laughs> totally, totally, totally. All right, I've got one more from Carl because I want to respect your time. He wants to know, do you have a set of templates for every niche you work on? So real estate, financial supplements, do you use templates at all? Um, no, not really. I mean, I do in a way. So I, I think that the best template is a process. Um, and so if you're following a specific process that gets you from A to B, uh, we're gonna research, we're gonna find these trigger moments, we're gonna write these specific ads, and then we can plug it into frameworks where here we're gonna start with that piece of dialogue, and then we're gonna tell that, that problem story and how this shows up in this person's life, and then how they can turn it around, and then go through this whole thing and kind of framework it out. But I don't use templates. So in this like copy or anything I was talking about, I have frameworks where you can kind of plug stuff in, but it's more like, here's a section where we're going to talk about this. Here's a section where we talk about yep. this versus a fill in the blank template. Um, I'm just, I don't know. I'm not a huge fan of templates just because I think that it's hard to use templates because you get so stuck trying to like fill in the blanks perfectly and like, and you end up um, kind of killing your own creative process by trying to, to 
fit a square peg into a round hole. Yeah. Uh, whereas if you have more of a framework of like, here's where we're going to put this type of thing, this type of thing, this type of thing, then you can write it out and then you can go through and connect everything in, in powerful ways. Um, so I don't know. I like using frameworks like that, but I don't use templates. That's awesome. Yeah. I think that's really important because a lot of people, um, it's not that they don't want to put in the legwork to learn this stuff, but it's, it's hard and it's time consuming. And so people are looking for that like plug and play system and you really yeah. got to just like guide your, your system. <laughs> yeah. And part of this copywriting process too, I think like there's a missing piece sometimes between research and writing. Um, and so people do this research and they're like, all right, cool. I'm going to start writing now. Uh, and sometimes it's like, yeah, that research gets lost and you don't pull out the good stuff. So I, and so part of this copywriting system is there's a whole process called story mapping where you're mapping out all of these different elements um, of the story and taking fear and dimensionalizing that into different ways that this shows up in someone's life. <clears throat> and through the process of story mapping, you're actually writing some of the ads because you can just pull over some of that stuff into these frameworks and like, oh, this is a section where we talk about why this product um, you know, was started uh, and the Genesis story or whatever. Um, so I think that you, you know, when you have that intermediate process, it allows you to not have to use a template and actually write stuff way, 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 way faster because sometimes using a template can kill you. The only other thing I'll say about templates too is just to watch out um, because there are templates active on the market today that you could download. And if you went and used in especially specific industries, you will probably get kicked off of Facebook. Mm. <laughs> These yeah. are from, anyway, I'm not going get, to get about them. that. Yeah. Just do your homework. Do your homework on people. Do your homework. Watch out because, uh, yeah, it's, it would suck to download a template that you're just like, yeah, this is going to kill it. Yep. Uh, and then get your ad account banned. And do your, do your homework with, uh, use, use your own common sense. I mean, if you're going to put a template out there, you, it's, you are responsible as the one putting it out. You need to make sure it's compliant, right? Even if some expert totally. said it's compliant, like you said, even if they were right then, things change every day. So. Yeah. If the template starts out, are you tired of X? Yeah, be careful what you plug into those blanks. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, man. All right, so I've got one more question for you from Paris Lampropolis, who says, can I hire you? <laughs> <laughs> oh, man, yeah. I met Paris at Copy Chief Live. Um, and, yeah, it's great. I'll, great I'll send him, I'll send him over. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, <laughs> he still wants to after, after hearing... After hearing this interview. <laughs> well, I learned a lot, so I'm sure that, that anyone else will too. And that's actually a great question, and it's a good one to wrap this up, because if people want to get in touch with you, if someone does want to hire you. That ad magic report is chimpwolf.com. Chimp, as in like a monkey, C-H-I-M-P-W-O-L-F.com um, backslash ad magic. That's a, uh, I think your website name is a story for another day too. Yeah. <laughs> story for another day. Next time. <laughs> Next time. Awesome. And I will link to that in the resources below this video too. So Mike, thank you. I learned so much. I really appreciate it. And I, I really want that story framework that, that ads writing system. So hurry awesome. up. <laughs> yeah, no, yeah, we'll do it. Hey, this is awesome. Thanks so much. Uh, this, this is fun. Absolutely. Thanks a lot, Mike. So if you want to connect with Mike, you can learn more about him or get in touch with him on his website at chimpwolf.com. Send him a message, go get his resources, and we will also link to that website in the resources section on the blog post where you can find this video. So I hope that was helpful for you guys, and until next time, I hope you have a great week, and thanks for watching.